Good morning children. I hope all of you are keeping fine. In this video, you will learn about the second part of chapter 2, Plant Life, the Flower. The main learning objectives of this module are Fertilization, the fruit, dry and fleshy fruits, functions of a fruit, the seed, types of seeds, germination of a seed, and types of germination. Children, in our previous video, you have learnt about the process of pollination. In this process, the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or another flower. Now let us see what exactly happens after the pollination. The next and the most important step is fertilization, where the fusion of male cell and female cell takes place. What is fertilization? For fertilization to occur, pollen grain grows a tiny tube-like structure and reaches towards the lower part of the ovary, carrying male cell along with it. When this male cell reaches the ovary, it unites with the female cell or egg cell. The process of fusion of male cell with the female cell is known as fertilization. Children, pollen grain is known as male cell and egg cell is known as female cell. The fusion of male cell and female cell leads the formation of zygote. This zygote further develops into an embryo. The zygote formation marks the completion of fertilization. Post-fertilization changes after fertilization, the changes that take place in each part of a flower are petals, stigma and anthers dry up and fall off. Sepals often dry up and stay attached. Ovary develops into fruit. Ovary wall develops into fruit wall and ovule develops into seed. Children, let us see what is a fruit. A fruit is the mature and ripened ovary developed after the completion of two processes, pollination and fertilization. A fruit contains an outer fruit wall known as pericarp and seeds. Based on the nature of pericarp, Fruits can be of two types, dry fruits and fleshy fruits. Dry fruits, when the pericarp of a fruit is dry, it is known as dry fruit. All the nuts are the examples of dry fruits. Fleshy fruits, when the entire pericarp of a fruit is juicy or fleshy on ripening, it is called fleshy fruit. Example, pear and mango. Children, do you know? Most of the dry fruits are green in their initial stage, but they become dry at maturity. Let us know about the parts of a fruit. In the fleshy fruits, the pericarp is divided into three parts. Epicarp. It is the outer, thin, and leathery part which forms the tough outer skin of the fruit. Mesocarp. It is the sweet, fleshy and edible part of the fruit. Endocarp. It is the inner hard and woody part of the fruit that usually contains seeds. Children, let us know about the types of fruits. Fruits can be classified as simple fruits, 
मल्टीपल फ्रूट्स एंड एग्रीगेट फ्रूट्स वॉट आर सिंपल फ्रूट्स द फ्रूट्स विच डेवलप फ्रॉम सिंगल ओवरी आर नोन एज सिंपल फ्रूट्स एग्जाम्पल एप्पल मैंगो एंड पियर एग्रीगेट फ्रूट्स एन एग्रीगेट फ्रूट इज वन दैट डेवलप्स फ्रॉम न्यूमरस कार्पल्स दैट ऑल आर इन द सेम फ्लॉर The mature carpels fuse together to form an entire fruit. For example, strawberry and blackberry. Multiple fruits. These fruits are also known as collective fruits. A multiple fruit develops from the cluster of flowers. For example, pineapple. functions of a fruit it protects the seeds from extreme environmental conditions it stores food material when animals eat fruits they carry the fruit away to the far places thus it helps in dispersal of seeds Let us see what is a seed. After the process of fertilization, the ovules present in the ovary develops into the seeds. The seed has an outer protective cover called the seed coat. On the seed coat, there is a small scar known as hilum. Below the hilum, there is a small pore known as micropyle. Through this micropyle, water enters into the seed. Below the seed coat, there is a fleshy part known as cotyledons. Based on the types of cotyledons, the seeds are of two types: monopod seed and dicot seed. A seed which has one cotyledon is known as monopod. pod seed a seed which has two cotyledons is known as dicot seed let us know about the structure of a dicot seed this type of seed has two cotyledons example gram and beans the cotyledons store food for the baby plant called embryo an embryo has two parts radical and plumule the radical develops into root while the plumule develops into shoot monopod seed this type of seeds have only one cotyledon example maize and rice there is a part inside the seed that is called endosperm This endosperm stores food and provides nourishment to the embryo. An embryo has two parts, radical and plumule. The radical develops into root while the plumule develops into shoot. Germination of a seed. The growth of a seed into a young plant or a seedling is known as germination of a seed it occurs in the following stages the seed absorbs the water through micropyle the seed coat breaks and the radical sprouts and grows downwards the plumule starts growing upwards which produces stem Now the seedling grows the green leaves and start making its own food. By this time the cotyledons dry up and fall and seedling develops into a new plant. Let us know about the seedling in detail. A seedling is a young plant developing out of the embryo. 
it consists of three main parts radical hypocotyl and cotyledons do you know children germination in any plant ends with the formation of seedling the roots of the seedling absorb water and minerals from the soil the leaves start manufacturing food for the young plant which keeps growing and becomes a mature plant and produces flowers and seeds conditions necessary for germination of seeds first is water it softens the seed coat due to which the seed coat burst and open then radical grows downward to form primary root and plumule grows upward to form the shoot it is necessary for chemical reactions also next is air seeds require energy for their proper growth this energy comes from respiration so that oxygen is required next is temperature seeds require an optimum temperature for their growth the favorable temperature for the germination of seed is 35 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius do you know children below 0 degrees celsius and above 40 degrees celsius seeds do not germinate germination of a seed can be of two types epigeal germination where cotyledons are pushed above the ground hypogeal germination where cotyledons remain below the ground let us study about them in detail what is epigeal germination in epigeal germination the seed leaves or the cotyledons are brought on the surface or above the soil during germination these cotyledons transport the stored nutrients to the developing seedling this type of germination is found in dicot seeds example the seeds of bean cotton and papaya what is hypogeal germination in hypogeal germination the seed leaves or the cotyledons remain below the soil surface during germination these cotyledons transport the nutrients to the developing seed leaf this type of germination is found in monocot seeds example the seeds of maize groundnut and mango children let us wind up i hope all the explained topics in this video finds you worth watching and interesting thank you